Hi book lovers! Welcome back to my channel. I am back with another giant book haul because I got a lot of books last month back in February. Lots of book boxes which means special editions. I got a couple new arcs and it was also my birthday so I got a couple books from that. Anyway I have a lot of books to show you guys so let's just get started. I'll do the book boxes first, the ones that I'm a rep for, like this one which is Mystic Box. They're like a dark romance book subscription and each box comes comes with two exclusive hardcovers with exclusive covers. They're both by the same author. The latest box that just shipped out was the Carrie and Cole box, which was the January-February author. I mean, technically, these books came in March, but I'm a little bit too excited to not show them immediately. So these are the two exclusive hardcovers, and they are so pretty. This one is the exclusive edition of Torn, which is book one in the All Torn Up series. I actually have read this one. I read this one quite a while ago. It's a Forbidden Age age gap romance between the heroine and her father's friend. This is what the front cover looks like and the gorgeous back cover as well. And it's also got these pretty sprayed edges. Mystic Box started doing them like a couple months ago and they are so, so nice. This one, it's got like a light blue color and some flowers on it. And then this one is the gorgeous cover of No Tomorrow. I think I like this one even more than a torn cover. It is so, so nice. I haven't read this one yet, but I really want to. And also look at these beautiful sprayed edges. It's sprayed black with some almost shimmery silver to it. It looks amazing. This one is a second chance romance, so perfect for me. It's also a rock star romance. The heroine fell in love with a homeless musician and then over a decade later he actually became a rock star, super famous. I was actually hoping one of these Carrie and Cole books was gonna be Don't Kiss the Bride, which I really enjoyed last year, but honestly I have no complaints about these two. Mystic Box always does an amazing job with their books. Box also came with this cute little pin. It's got Kenzie and her dog on it. Two cards with some fan art and also a note from the author from Carrie and Cole. And then the sister box to a mystic box is a bell book box. This one is more for regular contemporary romances. And these are the two featured books with the two featured author. This one is Indigo Ridge by Daphne Perry. And this one is The Revenge Pact by Elsa Madden Mills. Indigo Ridge is the first book in the Eden series, which is Daphne Perry's latest series. Series. It's a small town romance with some romantic suspense. The heroine is the new chief of police. So this is what the gorgeous hardcover looks like, the front and the back, and of course there's also the sprayed edges like for a mystic box. This one is so pretty, I don't know if you can tell, but the sprayed edges are some blue mountains and some forest. And then the Revenge Pact by Elsa Mann Mills. This is a sports romance, a football romance, I think college too. I haven't read this one yet, I haven't read either of them yet. And it's also a forbidden romance because the hero is the heroine's boyfriend's frat brother. This is the stunning front cover and the back cover. And these are the sprayed edges. It's black with some yellow flowers, a yellow football, and a peace sign. And then the cute little goodies. This is a card. It says read more romance. These are some magnetic bookmarks. And then a sticker that says if the book is open, I'm busy. I got some shirts from Hello Lovely Box. No books this time, but I am so freaking excited about the Gianna Darling box, their spring box. I got this shirt that says main character energy. I got their new villain t-shirt which is gonna pair so well with my anti-hero romances. I also literally just ordered their Bridgerton shirts like the new ones that feature Kate and Anthony. I'm so excited for those. So those are the three companies that I'm a rep for. If you need any codes I have 10 and 15% off discounts for them. You can find my codes down in the description below as well as links to their websites. I also got these special editions from some other book boxes. These ones actually got secondhand because I wasn't able to snag the boxes that these came in. So this one, as soon as I heard my girl Jessica Kane had a special edition, I think this one was from the Dangerous Romance box. As soon as I heard there was a Jessica Kane special edition, I knew I needed it. It's called Rolling in the Dough and look how cute this cover is. This one is actually a compilation of two of her novellas. It's got a pinch of sugar and a dash of spice, which are the first two books in her foodie romance series, but I did really love these two novellas. It's like her smutty version of the Great British Bake Off, the Lights, Camera, Insta Love series, which I totally forgot the name of. It's also signed by her, and I'm so, so happy I was able to get this. And then I couldn't not get the special edition of All Roads Lead Here by Mariana Zapata. This is what the special edition cover looks like, and if you haven't read it, this one is another slow burn, of course. The heroine moves 
to the town that her mother grew up in to feel closer to her after her death. And she ends up renting this space from our hero who is a very grumpy single father. I feel like I couldn't pass this one up because I feel like I prefer the original cover to this one. Not that this one isn't pretty or anything, but I really, really love the original cover. But this is Mariana's first special edition book, so I felt like I had to have it. And then I got this very expensive set of books from the Bookish Box. This is their exclusive edition of the Bargainish series by Laura Thalassa. I bought both Laura Thalassa sets from them. So these are the three books in the Bargainer series. We've got Rhapsodic, A Strange Hymn, and Dark Harmony. And I don't know if you can tell on the spine, but all three books do have the hero's wing on them. And the dust jackets that I currently have on these books are actually the art on the reverse dust jacket. I put them on this side because I really love this one. I prefer it to the other side. And I don't know if you can tell, but there is some very pretty gold foiling on these covers. Mostly on the title and the author name, but there's also some gold foiling for the stars and like here for the crown. It all looks so freaking nice. I'm very happy with them, especially with how much I spent on them. And then these are the designs on the edges. This is book one, book two, and book three. And then this is the other side of the dust jacket, and these are the very pretty spines. The spines do connect. They say, Bargainer, I would like to make a deal. This one is book one, Rhapsodic, and there is quite a bit more gold foiling to it, at least compared to the other side of the dust jacket, which is always nice, and the back cover. It also says the same thing as the spines, Bargainer, I would like to make a deal. Book two is Strange Him. This one is actually huge because they also included the novella, Emperor of Evening Stars. And then the back cover, it's got another quote. It says, I would steal the stars in the sky for you. And then the third and final book is Dark Harmony. It's got another very romantic quote on the back. Also, I love that there's also foiling where the summary is and where the author bio is. And then whatever this inside page is called, there's some um, pretty designs on them. And there's also some artwork in each book. They're like sketches that are based off of the hero sketches. At least that's what I remember. And then these are the gorgeous naked hardcovers that do have foiling on them. This is the design for book one. All of them match the artwork on the dust jacket. This is the design on book two, the front and the back. And then this is the design on book three. There's the spoiling on the spine, the inverted spine, which is a little strange. Like I kind of wish that the spines were the other way around. Like they're fine on the other side of the dust jacket with the artwork, but here instead of, you know, being able to read it this way from book one, two, and three, with book one on top. I have to flip them all facing downward like this is the back cover. So I mean I think it's a strange choice just because it's not what I'm used to but it is still really pretty. But the artwork side is the side that I'm gonna keep the dust jackets on but let me know which one you like better. I'm gonna put these on my handy dandy little book card that I got for my birthday from my friend Desiree. I've been wanting one for a while and I guess she just got really tired of me and just ordered one for my birthday. So so my book boxes, my special editions are done. Let me show you what's in the rest of my haul. I got this giant box from the publisher of the Blood and Ash series. On the sides of the box it says war is only the beginning. And yes, it did come with a new Blood and Ash book, The War of Two Queens. This is book four in the series and it's coming out real, really soon, March 15th, which is this coming Tuesday. I actually started it, but had to put it down because I got another ARG from Penelope Douglas and that one took priority. But look how pretty it is and it is another thick book. It's 645 pages. It came with this little zip pouch that says war is only the beginning. Uh, this bookmark, a pillowcase with a quote from the series, a quote from Cass, and the cutest little Kieran Wolf plushie. He's wearing a shirt that says I like questions. It also came with this dragon bookend but I kind of accidentally um, dropped it so it lost a wing and a four leg but I just need to super glue it back together and this adorable little comic it was commissioned by creatively Les. so that was a great box and I will eventually get to finishing up the war of two queens I got a couple arcs last month although this one already released it came out February 15th it's called open play by Jan Welsh who I have not read before it's a love triangle romance the heroine is this renowned physical therapist one of the heroes is an Irish soccer player and the other 
another one is his best friend. This one is an arc of The Date from Hell by Gwenda Bond. It's the sequel to Not Your Average Hot Guy, which was a paranormal romance, a paranormal rom-com. The hero is the son of Satan, he's the prince of hell, and since this is a sequel that follows the same couple, the two main characters are already together. This one isn't out until April, and then this one I was so excited about. It's a Caribbean heiress in Paris. It's a historical romance from Adriana Herrera, who I love. I love her contemporary romances, and I have read one of her historical romance novellas. I read one of her historical romance novellas in an anthology, and that was really good, so I'm excited about this one. We've got an American heiress heroine, and the hero is an earl, and it sounds like there might be a marriage of convenience. These are some books that Berkeley sent me. The Lady Thompson Heir by Harper St. George, which is book three in the Gilded Age heiresses series. I've been enjoying the series so far, and at this one we're finally getting the Brothers book. This is Maxwell's book. He's kind of been here and there in the first two books, and I'm really excited about this one because it's got the fake engagement trope. The main characters have to fake an engagement so that he can save himself from this unwanted marriage, and she can save herself from financial ruin. Ramon and Julieta by Alana Quintana Albertson, which is a modern retelling of Romeo and Juliet. I actually read this one earlier this month and thought it was really cute. It's a foodie enemies to lovers romance. It's star-crossed lovers, of course. The hero is the son of the man who stole from the heroine's mother. He stole her taco recipe and created a fortune out of it while the heroine's family struggled. So this was a fun foodie romance. A Perfect Equation by Elizabeth Everett, which is historical romance. It's an enemies to lovers historical romance. The heroine is a mathematician and the hero is a Viscount. This one is Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Drake, which is an FF romance. One of the heroines is a single mother and it's sort of a wedding romance too because the heroines are forced to work together for one of the stepsister's wedding. And this is I'm So Not Over You by Kosoko Jackson. I'm actually in the middle of this one, in the middle of the audiobook, and it's been great so far. It's an MM romance, a second chance romance. It's been a couple months since Kian and Hudson broke up, but then Hudson calls up out of the blue and asks a favor out of Kian. He wants Kian to pretend to be his boyfriend while his parents are in town because he hasn't told his parents yet that they've broken up. So it's second chance romance, fake dating. One of the main characters comes from a very wealthy family. The other one does not and it's been a really fun read so far. I also got a couple books that Montlake sent me. This one is a new Alona Andrews book. It's Faded Blades which is a sci-fi romance. It's part of their Kinsman series, Kinsman Universe series. I haven't read that series yet. I haven't read this book yet but I love Alona Andrews. Kate Daniels is one of my top favorite series ever and I'm obsessed with their Hidden Legacy series but I do have quite a few series of theirs to still read and this one is one of them. It's an enemies to lovers romance. The main characters are forced to partner with each other. Something Fabulous by Alexis Hall which is an MM historical romance. The hero is a duke and his fiance has just run away because she doesn't want to marry him so the duke partners up with his fiance's twin brother and they end up falling for each other. This one I actually listened to for free on KU. It's like a rom-commy historical romance. It gets very over the top and silly, but I did enjoy it. It has some good sunshine, grumpy sunshine vibes. And this one is Rushed by Aurora Rose Reynolds. The heroine gets dumped by her fiance literally days before their wedding, and she ends up going to this couple's retreat by herself, and she ends up falling for the wilderness retreat's owner. I was very excited when St. Martin's Press sent me the new L. Kennedy Good Girl Complex, but I actually didn't end up loving this one. I know a lot of people struggled with it. It's a new to college romance, but it's just very underwhelming. It's your classic good girl, bad boy romance, but it just wasn't anything special. I also was sent The Damaged by Tijin, which is book two in her Insider series. I haven't read it yet. It's supposed to be a trilogy, I think, and there's still one more book left. I honestly have no idea what this series is about, but it kind of sounds like suspense, like romantic suspense. This one is Hunt the Stars by Jesse Mihalik. It's a sci-fi romance, kind of like space opera. It's got enemies to lovers, and I really want to read it. I really want to read this author. I've heard amazing things about her books, about her sci-fi romances, and I honestly just don't read enough 
of this subgenre. I got this finished copy of Camilla Knows Best by Farrah Heron. This is a Bollywood retelling of Emma by Jane Austen. The heroine is sort of like a matchmaker and the hero is a family friend. And this one is a witchy romance. It's not the witchy wed by April Asher. It's a second chance romance between a witch heroine who is magicless and the alpha shifter hero. He's the alpha werewolf and they used to be in love as teenagers but then he broke her heart. But now they're forced to find mates for themselves so they end up fake dating, fake mating so that they can buy themselves some time. It honestly sounds really fun and I don't really read the witch and werewolf pairing that often except for like Cresley Cole. So I'm excited about this. Harlequin sent me A Song for Secrets by JC Lee. It's the first book in a new series, the Hana Trio series. It's got a second chance romance. The heroine is a cellist and the hero is a composer. And I also got these two reprints. This one is Heart of the Game by Nora Roberts. It's a two-in-one book. It's got the hearts, victory, and rules of the game. And this one is the mass market paperback of The Girl He Used to Know by Tracy Garvis Graves, which I have read and enjoyed. It's a second chance romance that does coincide with 9-11. I got a couple books from some indie authors too. This first one actually won in a giveaway on Facebook. It's the special edition hardcover of Love and Other Cursed Things by Kristen Becca Ritchie. It's a small town romance, small town FF romance, seaside I think. I mean it's got a lighthouse on the cover. One of the heroines is town royalty and then the other one she calls herself town scum. So FF romance opposite sides of the track. I was very excited to get Welcome to the Dark Side by Gianna Darling. This one is the book that I've been trying to get for myself on like Target three for two sales but they never have this one. They always have book one and book three which I got but they just never had the second book but I finally got it from Gianna's publicist. I love this one. I mean I think it's most people's favorite Gianna Darling book at least in the Fallen Men series. It's an MC romance, forbidden romance, huge age gap. I got Deceitful by C. Riley who is Cora Riley. This is like her paranormal fantasy romance. It's romantic suspense about a serial killer in a small town. The heroine is part of the FBI and she has this magic power of absorbing people's DNA. DNAs. So this sounds interesting. It's Cora Riley's first non-contemporary romance, so I'm curious how this will turn out. This one is Triple Threat by Kay Webster, which I really, really liked. It's a reverse harem romance, and the three heroes are triplets, identical triplets. It's a little bit dark, like the heroes are involved with the mafia, sort of. They're forced by their uncle, their mafia uncle, to pretend to be one person, to trick the heroine to get close to her so that they can find out her dad secrets. It's a first book in a duet and the second book is supposed to come out in March, like the end of March, and I'm so excited. This is a historical romance from Forever. It's Say You'll Be My Lady by Kate Pembroke. I've never read her before, but I do like that the hero used to be a boxer. He's a former boxer turned gentleman. Avon also sent me some Joanna Shoot books. They sent me the entire 400 series. Book one is A Daring Arrangement. Book two is A Scandalous Deal. And book three is A Notorious Vow which was actually one of our historical romance readathon buddy reads. I have read the series and book two is my favorite of these three historical romances because the heroine, she's a female architect. Book three is also really good though. It's like friends to lovers, marriage of convenience, and the hero is mute. I got Prisoned by Marnie Mann. This one looks pretty dark. The back cover literally has a toilet on it. It's a kidnapping romance and that's pretty much all I know. I've never read her before but I've heard her books are pretty intense. I also got Once a Myth by Pepper Winters. It's been a while since I read Pepper Winters but I do love her dark romances. This is the first book in the Goddess Isle series and Max Monroe also sent me the three new covers of the Doctor Zinn series. Book one is Dr. OB, book two is Dr. ER, and book three is Dr. Nero. So they're all of course doctor romances, medical field romances, and I do really like these new covers. I've read a couple of their books but I don't think I've read these just yet. I think my library does have them in audio so that's probably how I'll end up reading these. I also got some non-romances from some publishers like this big box from Penguin Teen. It's such a nice box. It's for Saba Tahir's new book All My Rage. There's these two cute postcards, a tote bag that says All My Rage. There's a purple journal and this keychain 
Rain, and of course the All My Rage book. It's a contemporary YA with two timelines. The past one is set in Pakistan and the present day is set in California and the two timelines are about this one family. I got another box from Wednesday Books. It came with these stickers and some candy and the book is Reclaim the Stars which is an anthology edited by Zoraida Cordova. It's 17 tales across realms and space. This is a new and Bishop book who I have been meaning to read. It's Crow Bones. It's a paranormal fantasy book, maybe urban fantasy. It's set in the world of the others. I got the new J.D. Robb, the new in death book, Abandoned in Death. I love the series but I am so so behind. I think this is book 50 something and I'm only at book 9. I got this copy of Verity from her new publisher. Verity was indie published but then it got acquired by Grand Central Publishing. I have read this one. I read this thriller. It was okay for me but that's just because I kind of already got spoiled for it. The Secret Love Letters of Olivia Moretti by Jennifer Probst. This one is women's fiction about three estranged sisters. Homicide and Hollow Hollow by Mia P. Manansala. This is a sequel to Arsenic and Adobo. It's another cozy mystery. And I got this gorgeous hardcover of the new Tahira Mafi, This Woven Kingdom. It's the first book in her new royal fantasy series. I used to love her so much. Like I loved the Shatter Me series. I loved like the first three books, but I haven't read all the new ones that she put out. I also got a few books for my birthday. This is from Remarkably Lisa. She got me Refrain by Kennedy Ryan, which is part of her Soul series. I haven't read the series yet, but this is what the Grip trilogy was a spinoff of. I read that series first because I didn't realize it was a spinoff of this series. So I'll eventually get to reading this one, but I'm currently trying to finish up her Hoop series. Echoes of Time by Kalia Reed is from my friend Kimberly, which is part of this time traveling romance series that I love. It's the third book in the Surviving Time series, and it's so, so good. The heroine is from modern day and she ends up time traveling back to the early 1900s like 30s. She ends up replacing the older version of herself that no one really likes and she's married to the hero. Tori from A Novel Life sent me Lord of London Town by Tilly Cole. This is a mafia romance that's set in London and I've heard really good things about it. Charles from Books on Stereo sent me Her Soul to Take by Harley LaRue. We were supposed to buddy read the second book and I ended up finishing it and he just forgot about it. But I did love this first book. It's like a human demon paranormal romance. Book two was a little disappointing, I will say, but I am really looking forward to the third and final book. And Jessica from Peace Love Books sent me Twisted Games by Anna Huang. I'm actually collecting the series because I also got for myself the third book, Twisted Hate. So these two are books two and three in the Twisted series, which I do enjoy. Twisted Games is a royal romance and then Twisted Hate is enemies to lovers. And then these last few books are the books that I I bought for myself. I randomly decided, I guess after I finished reading the Immortals After Dark series, I've been wanting more Cresley Cole books, so I decided to bite the bullet and start reading her YA series. So I got Arcana Rising, which is one of the later books in her Arcana Chronicle series, and I actually ended up reading book one and liked it a lot. I'm definitely going to be continuing with this series, and I'm really glad that I didn't hate it because I bought this before I started the series. This one I actually found you for super cheap. It's Butterfly and Frost by Sylvie Day, who's one of my favorites. This one is a novella. It's contemporary romance, and it kind of got really twisty, like some twists and turns I did not expect. This one's her latest book. It came out a couple years ago in 2019, and she hasn't released anything since. I've been waiting for so long for a new book from her. I'm still waiting on that Blacklist series that she teased at the end of the Crossfire series. That series sounded amazing, but it's been like six years, I think, since she first teased it and hasn't really talked about it since. I also got myself Unseen Messages by Pepper Winters, which was this really epic survival romance. I saw someone was selling it for super cheap, so I ended up getting it. It's a very long book, very thick, almost 600 pages, and it got so intense. I remember loving it. If you love survival romances, like these characters crash on an island and there are actual deaths that will hurt you, you need to read this one. I got I Hate You by Elsa Madden Mills, which is one of her sports romances. It's a second 
second chance romance, football romance, lovers to enemies to lovers. He's like the popular football player and she's the nerdy girl. And I also had to get one of my favorites from Pam Godwin, Dark Notes. It's a forbidden romance, forbidden teacher-student romance with an age gap and I loved it. And of course it's not a book haul on my channel without some used historical romances. This is Kiss of the Highlander by Karen Marie Monning, which is the last Highlander book that I've been looking for. The series is like a time travel Scottish historical romance series. I really liked it. It's one of the first historical romances that I ever read. I got another Stephanie Lawrence book to add to my collection. This is The Perfect Lover and this is The Step Back. I got this gorgeous Catherine Coulter book, Night Shadow. I mean look how pretty this cover is and the back cover too. And then the rest are a bunch of Jude Devereaux books. Her most popular one, A Nine Shining Armor, which I'm also joining the Historical Hellions book club this month for. I read this one back in December and it was a pretty interesting read. This one is The Maiden and this is what the step back looks like. This one actually sounds really good because it's a romance between a princess and a king, a medieval romance, and he was the prince that pretended to be a knight who had a tryst with the heroine and he ended up being the prince who stole her brother's throne. The Enchanted Land, which is one of Jude Devereaux's very first books, I believe. It was published back in 1978. Another older book of hers, Sweetbriar, which is one of her Native American historical romances. And the final book in this haul is The Awakening, which is a Western romance with this beautiful step back. And that is about it for this gigantic haul. If you read any of these or any of these catch your eye, let me know. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye!